Hello, Denis Fedorov here. In this video and in several following videos of this series, I'm going to share my thoughts on how to learn Russian. Basically, I'm planning to show and explain to you the whole path of learning Russian from zero to hero and tell what you should pay your attention to in order to successfully achieve elementary, beginner, intermediate and advanced levels of proficiency in Russian. Let's start! To answer the question uh, how to learn Russian, first we need to decide what it means to learn Russian. And here is the scale of the levels of proficiency in the Russian language. Basically, this is how the general path of learning Russian looks like. The main modern-day proficiency level system for the Russian language that we use in Russia is based on the same scale as for most other languages. It is the common European framework of reference for languages. And in accordance to this framework, uh, there are six uh, levels of proficiency in Russian, which are a1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Six levels. Basically, when uh, studying Russian, you want to start climbing from level zero to one of these levels you want to achieve. For many, this climbing looks like this or like this. Probably, if you want to learn Russian, your goals should be within the limits between B1 and C1 levels. The level B1 is a pretty good level of language proficiency, and there is an interesting fact that many B1 level students often call themselves fluent. Of course, it is a bit of an exaggeration from their side, but this level is definitely not bad. And if many students of this level claim that they are fluent, it means that many of them truly subjectively believe they know a language very good. I remember myself when I achieved this B1 level, but with English. Uh, of course, I knew nothing about the existence of this B1 level at that time, but I remember that at that moment I was very much better in English than almost everyone I knew. In Russia, almost all of us study English at school, uh, at least for several years, uh, so basically everyone knows some English here, at least at some point. So on this level B1, uh, I, I was very much better than the total majority of the Russian population. Two heads and shoulders above almost everyone else. So B1 is a really great level you can be proud of as a learner. Okay, B1 is a level of lower borderline of a good proficiency in Russian. The upper limit will be C1, in my opinion. C1 is another realistic limit because C2 is a level equivalent or at least almost equivalent to an educated native speaker with an emphasis on the word educated. So, it is a very high level of language proficiency, as you might guess. Thus, if the Russian language is not going to be a cornerstone of your life, C1 is probably going to be the maximum realistic goal you could set before yourself. C1 is a good level when even native speakers tell you that you know their language very good, but for yourself, you of course will know that you don't know their language as good as your mother tongue. Uh, that's why your realistic goal in learning Russian should be probably within the limits of B1 and C1. Of course, you can set a goal to achieve a C2 level uh, uh, in Russian and nobody forbids you to do that. Uh, certainly, I am not. Okay, uh, now I want to present to you another thing. Uh, it's a general diagram of distribution of your efforts. It includes only very general skills without sub-skills and it will be helping me to explain to you uh, how to learn Russian in future videos. 
My diagram is based uh, on another diagram created in 80s uh, by a couple of language professors, Higgs and Clifford, uh, and at that time uh, has been revised by 50 language instructors before uh, its official release. So you see here a result of what that collective mind gave birth to, and I have adapted a little this one for the 21st century. For example, basing uh, on this uh, diagram, we can say that uh, when starting to learn Russian, you pay most of your efforts to developing a vocabulary, less efforts to grammar and pronunciation, and fluency is less important because on this elementary level of communication, it doesn't matter that much. So, with the help of this image, uh, we shall review the whole Russian language learning path based on major essential skills, which in this particular diagram are vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and fluency. So, what do these skills mean exactly? Vocabulary basically means the number of words and phrases you know. In real practice, especially in the beginning, by vocabulary we mostly mean your active vocabulary. Grammar is the way in which words are put together to form proper sentences. That's why learning the grammar of a language means learning how to use the language and to do it properly. So, with grammar, uh, we connect those words that we have in our vocabulary into sentences. By the way, that's the most underestimated aspect uh, by self-learners. Most people, self-learners, who came to me to get personal help with Russian never had been studying uh, grammar seriously before, and that was the main reason they couldn't start speaking Russian. Pronunciation is the way in which we say things. Uh, generally, it is the ability to speak properly according to norms and patterns uh, of a language, and in real life mostly it means to be understood. So, uh, this is basically not about accent, because official international approaches to accents are very mild and can be described in a sentence. There is no proper accent. Of course, that's an official tolerant idea, but subjectively we all know that the, uh, there is always a proper correct accent, and a, a correct accent is an accent that we think is correct. Fluency is the ability to express oneself easily and articulately. It can be measured in words per minute, but in, it generally means that how easy you speak or know your way around the language. So, these were the major meta skills within the help of which I am going to share how to distribute your efforts to learn Russian. Also, I have prepared for you a handout with the information from this video, the scale of proficiency and the efforts diagram from this video can be found in this PDF. The link is in the description. And that's it for today. See you in other videos.